Good morning, beautiful people! Today we are going to visit Machu Picchu. We are going on a two-day... Tomorrow day. we are going to visit Machu Picchu. Tomorrow. Today we will start the adventure, the tour. We are going on a two days, one night tour with Alpaca Expedition. We are going to visit Sacred Valley and then we'll go on a train and tomorrow we'll visit the masterpiece, the Machu Picchu. Nice to meet you, my name is Jose. Jose. Luca. Nice to meet you. Here is where the adventure begins. Uh, Buenos dias. Cusco, I call Cusco, I don't call Cusco. Cusco. Yeah, because our, our native language yeah. is the Quechua. Nowadays people call Runasimi, which is an Omonotopia language. You know the Omonotopia? Yeah. Things that you can hear, you can hear you know, from sounds. That's, that, that's our language. So that's why people call nowadays Cusco. But it must be Cusco. Basically, we have uh, two archaeological sites for today, which is Pisac, and the next one is Ollante y Tambo. But between Pisac and Ollante y Tambo, we know, do we have like many stops? The Incas, they were able to, to harvest the knowledge from different ancient cultures. So many people say that Incas, they were just like a group of people who used to make a lot of power. This is true because they were just a group of people. Because many people think about it that all of them, they were Incas. But Incas, they were just like 14 of them. They were leaders, like a kings, like a, like a pharaohs. Thanks to them is the how the population they were able to find a good style of life. But how many people do you think in the whole empire? That was over 10 millions of people. I can tell that Incas they were considered as a semi-gods. But in 14 Incas, in 200 years, the num number nine leader was Pachacute. He was considered the best leader, the best Inca. Thanks to people is the how Incas they were able to make an empire. Because without people, you will make an empire. The first stop of the day is this amazing place where we will learn about these camels, uh, alpacas, uh, llamas, uh, and uh, all these uh, amazing animals. The family name of all these animals, the scientific name is Petrolis. They are all camels. They are so cute. In South America, you will find llamas, alpacas, ticuñas, and guanacos. This is the key one for, for farmers because they use this, this camel as a horse, as a donkey. Humans that's not why ride them. No people doesn't ride the llamas. It's too heavy. Or if they, if they feel that somebody is attacking. So, so they, they start once they speak, that's the hole, they can tell about those meanings. Which one is the expensive one? The, alpaca, the baby alpaca? Uh, talking about in domestic yeah. camels, the alpaca one. The alpaca one. But we had two, two kind of alpacas. Uh -huh. That one Suri. Suri? Yeah, Suri, you see the long ah, long hair. No, the long the hair, food, the long yeah. fever. Yeah. And that one is the wakaya. Wakaya. The wakaya. Ah, okay. And that one is the most expensive one. But the most expensive ones between llamas, alpacas, yes. and the other camels that you can see will be the guanacos and vicuñas. Yeah. Because the guanacos mm -hmm. And over there, right in the corner, you see the little ones? Mm -hmm. Those are vicuñas. You can see in, uh, in Argentina. Uh -huh part of this uh, group of wild camels, guanacos, but in Peru is in extinction. So this family here, they try to, to help, they try to protect, to take care of those animals. We don't eat this. But you eat a 
alpacas? We can we can eat the alpacas. We okay. can make jerky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can do also you no know, different kind of barbecues. One and two. Uh, can you, you want see to... something under that haircut? <laughs> No bite, no. Incas, yeah. this, this word Inca means son of the sun. The Incas, they were like leaders where they were able to make projects, where they were able to, you know, to find uh, the best way they how people they can find a good life, they how they can control the power, they how they can control the, the account, they how they can control so uh, these kind of problems between different villages, communities or territories. Pachamama, Mother Earth. A Mother Earth that was the inspiration for everyone. That's the whole Incas they were able to, to manage you know, the whole empire in 200 years. Not just one Inca, 14 of them. I don't call the Inca Empire. Okay. What I call it is the Quechua Empire. Thanks to Quechua is the whole Incas they were able to make an empire. Koi. Koi. So no, it's the noise that they make. The noise of yeah. those guinea pigs are koi, koi, koi. Because it's koi. koi. This one is the, the one that grows uh, more. Maybe. It can weigh over between three, four kilos. Wow. Thanks to those blankets. We can tell about the history of the Incas of, or maybe different cultures. It's like a one book, a book where you can read about it, the, how they used to do the life. Every single line, every single symbol has a meaning and that's how they used to keep uh, all the knowledge uh, for the new generations. What this seems to you? That could be like a really nice jewelry piece. I really like it. I could wear this. The Incas, they used this to, you see the knot? They used this to count how many people were dying and to just re remember the things. So it was just a, like an agenda. It's a kind of a, um, secret uh, language? language they had to, co to yeah, communicate that language. nobody so knows. Uh, it's so everything has a meaning. You see the carpet that we see, the blanket that we see. We are in an alpaca farm and they produce textiles as well with the vicuñas fur. Vicuñas fur is the most expensive one. And then you can use the alpaca fur as well. Should we buy this for the camper? Can you imagine, like down in Argentina? This is beautiful. Look, at you should try one of these. Do you like it? It's no super, it's soft? super soft, yes. The best part of uh, the Vicuña's product, you don't need to kill the animal to get the fur. So they protect the Vicuña's and they can get this beautiful fur when the animals die. You don't need to kill anyone, the animal doesn't need to suffer, it's, it's great. I think it uh, should be always like this. Uh. I'm gonna start with this garment. It's acrylic. The people put the label, they say 100% baby or adult alpaca, but no, it's true. How to recognize when you see, when you touch like this? It's a little spongy, why? Because they use a metal brush, they brush it to get apparently soft. But when you touch inside, it's different. It's hard, dry, yes, it's different. When it's acrylic, it's when you hold, it's light. Because alpaca garments is heavier. This is 100% 
baby alpaca. When alpaca is two years old, the first sharing, that the reason we call baby. When you touch, it's cold, like wet. The animal, they produce natural oil called lanolina, mm -hmm. lanoline. If you are curious, like we were, <laughs> to know how much is the price for a blanket like this, this is alpaca, this is vicuñas, the alpaca, it's less expensive and it's like around thousand dollars and this one Vicuñas is three thousand five hundred US dollars but it's amazing. We left the alpaca farm, it was incredible. We just climb direction Pizak. Now beautiful people enjoy the sacred valley. Valley is between 185 kilometers. Machu Picchu is right into the tropical forest. Mm -hmm. This river, my ancestors, yeah. they name it as a sacred river, mm. which is in our native language the Wilcamayuk. During the dry season, the Milky Way uh, has the, you know, this is the Milky Way. The local peoples here, they name it as a sacred river because during the dry season, the water in this river used to be less water and they thought that the water is having connection with the snow, with the heaven. Following the sacred valley, you are able to find not just one archaeological site, you will find 30 different archaeological sites. That's why they decided to study the sacred valley to know more about the culture, to know more about the tradition of the Incas. Once upon a time here was all volcanoes uh, around, called uh, the ring of fire, all volcanoes around here and uh, still now you can find a lot of hot springs uh, all around this area. It's magical, I think the colors and the mountain are so big and this is the first time that I see some mountains with this with this shape. The sacred valley is basically because you can see here amazing things like a fertile soil, you can learn about agriculture, you can learn so much about the history of the ancient time, and you can learn about you know, why this river will be important between the highland and the jungle. And you can tell the how you can you know, you can learn about the formation of those mountains. So that's why it's called the sacred valley. It's one sacred place where you can see so many things. Yeah. What time is the Inca culture? We, we have a hypothesis that was between 1320s to 14, 1420s and then to 1532, okay, right? After. So this is actually 200 years, that was after Greece. Okay. But before Greece, before 2700 years before Greece, mm -hmm. so in ancient cultures they were able to make, develop it as a culture. Pisac, actually that's not like 100% Inca style. So I can tell that Incas, they, you know, they took advantage of this site, they took advantage of the territory you know, because they thought that this is the best place where they can rebuild and to make a new, you know, new palace, a new laboratory. So at least probably just 20% was by some pre-cultures and the other percent was made by Incas. And we arrive at the archaeological site of Pizac. Pizaca, look at the view. Why it's called like this? Uh, it's called like this because there is this bird, mm -hmm. Pisaka. And uh, if you look from above, uh, 
it looks uh, like the shape uh, of this bird. This is the original one, was it? Eh? Oh, it's original, yes. Original. Yeah. This place has a uh, 30% of rest restoration. We are at 3,500 meters altitude. Look at that. This area uh, is in a perfect place where some sites like temples or altars face in important spots. Like which places? Sunset, sunrise, solstice days, Econos days, or even facing the Milky Way. But this place actually is not 100% Inca style. Incas they found this place as a perfect place where they can continue the project and to make bigger this project, to make one important village with so many sectors, like here, agriculture sector, religion sectors, urban sectors. How Incas, they're gonna dominate the land. How Incas, they will tell, okay, join to me, so an Inca, I'm better than your God. But also to Nazca Paracas, they got this technique. Exploring the highland, you will find 60 or 70 percent in one big village with terraces. That's yes. how they manage to get the all the people they can tell coming to the, the Inca. They, they can pay. That was the way the way they, how they can pay to people who's gonna make reciprocity. Does it because you can tell without food, no life. Mm -hmm. But Incas they knew it as well. So we should be powers in food. We should cultivate we should make more storehouses, granaries, and so many terraces, and we can learn about agriculture. Here in Ollante y Tambo, why the quarry is that far away? Oh, but there's a good quality of quarry. So that's why they took the rock from there. But why they didn't make the building over there? Because here there's has a good relation with the sands. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Every single place, Ollante y Tambo, Pisac, even Machu Picchu. So that's no, they've been looking for a perfect place. Pachacute, the ninth Inca leader, he was changing, he was developing the era still in 1420s, 1430s. So they, the Inca, when they came here, when they arrived here, they already found something. So we didn't know when they start building this, this site. But what we know is that when the Inca came, they start rebuilding and developing the area. And we can see two different styles. The rustic one before 1420, 1430, and the style after when the Inca arrived. Then we have the conquistadores, they, they arrive in 1530s and then destroy everything. Pacha Cute means uh, Pacha, it's a uh, hurt and Kute it's change because he wanted to do this change. He wanted to expand and uh, he made a lot of experiments uh, bringing soil from different uh, areas uh, of the country to make some uh, experiments, plant uh, different plants uh, and uh, was amazing. But uh, what was really impressive, the Inca, they were so successful because they plant a lot. They, they have a lot of food and they can use the food to survive, to feed themselves and to use the food like a money, like an exchange. They buy stuff with, with the food. They were really smart and say, okay, let's find the perfect spot where the soil, the land is rich, where we can build these uh, containing walls so we can just cultivate and we can stay here in this perfect spot where we, where we are aligned with the sun, with the, with the constellation. So this was the perfect spot, but then they abandoned. They just run away, especially first reason for, for the conquistadores and second reason because they just move to, down to the valley. It was easier just uh, the, you have the river, you have the water, the soil is good. Uh, so it was easier to do like that. The Inca Trail is a net of roads, uh, 45,000 kilometers of roads that are spreading through Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Chile, Bolivia, Argentina. There are two different types of trail. The sencillo, the simple one, and the noble one. The, the simple one was using for trade, for commercial reasons. The other trail, the other type of trade is the noble Inca trail. That was the one, why it's called noble? because there are some stairs and it's a shortcut where you can reach the mountain, the top of the mountain, really faster. And there were these guys uh, 
called runners. They could run 26 miles in two hours. And Chasky. Uh, Chasky was the name of these guys. And um, they were really important because it was the only way to connect and to communicate in the Inca Empire. And they didn't have horses, they didn't have cars, planes, trains, nothing. Because here they only had camels. It's interesting about the Inca toilet. So the Inca toilets, uh, it's kind of uh, the compost toilet uh, because uh, they just make a hole, do what they need to do and then put ashes on top so it dries, uh, it doesn't smell. Then they smell. can burn it. Yeah, and they can burn it. Eh? I just want to talk really quick about yes. all that holes up there. Mm -hmm. It used not to be holes, it used to be all closed because it's a, a cemetery, it's where they used to bury the bodies of uh, the people and uh, now it's all open because they used to bury them with all the belongings, uh, the pressure artifacts uh, they had in their lives, uh, so gold, uh, silver, all this kind of stuff. So what happened is that people start going there, breaking and getting all the available stuff. Uh, and uh, all the bodies they will bury the, like in a fetal position and they used to mummify the bodies so taking all the organs uh, inside taking the brain uh, from the north uh, canal and um, using all some plants uh, to make the body mummify that's the way they do it up here The rustic Inca Empire style. So the Inca Empire style was made it after 1420s. And that one before 1420s. This building is original. This is an altar and they they put the mummies inside the niche that you can see here. These flowers are called Puño Puño, because in native language it means uh, falling to sleep. Why falling to sleep? Because during the day they are open and during the night they close. They fall asleep. Puño Puño. We made it to the top. 3,514 meters above sea level. This is the highest point we will reach in these two days tour. The views are beautiful from here, the weather is perfect for now, so we are pretty happy. Yeah. And now we should keep going. Let's go. Let's go. Somos de Chiclayo, estamos en el gusto. Saludos. Chiclayo. So, Amaru means snake and Punku means gate, so this is the gate of the snakes because on this trail probably we will find some snakes and we have three sacred animals in the Inca religions we have the condor, we have the puma and we have the snake and the condor is the animal that can lift the dead body to the heaven The snake represents the knowledge This one just like a one layer mm -hmm. Ah, uh, bugs are freaking me out. <laughs> the bugs, the bugs keep landing on me. You know when you're not around. It says 10 minutes and we are. <laughs> bugs are freaking me out. It was you the whole time? Yeah. I was talking with Jose and he explained me that all the noble kids, uh, when they were born, they used to put uh, some wood in their heads and squeeze it uh, the first years of life. Uh, so the skull will grow not uh, round but like uh, long. Leaf? The nobles, they had big earrings. Uh, gold earrings uh, that make their ears really long uh, so they had long ears, uh, long uh, face uh, and um, the conquistadores when they arrived uh, they used to call them uh, orellones uh, that means uh, big ears in Spanish. The ninth leader, Inca leader, he had uh, many concubines uh, and he had 400 kids. 
Wow. We arrived to the market. Uh, in Pizak. Pizak market. You can find the market every day, but on Sunday and sat Saturday and Sunday you can find like the... A special the, one. Special one. knives used to make the sacrifice. What about this one? Oh la la. <laughs> Chess is the Incas versus the Conquistadores. We arrived at Urubamba and now it's time for lunch. This restaurant, buffet restaurant. From uh, Pizak we drove to uh, Urubamba, that is the biggest town in the Sacred Valley. And now we're gonna eat. Enjoy. It's really good. <laughs> really? It's like normal meat. Is Luca the only one brave enough? To try it? Are you gonna try it, Sado? No? Try it? Nope. <laughs> <Ready>? Nope. <laughs> okay, Luca is the only one eating the alpaca. Alright, so, Sara. You're the last one. Oh, everyone tried alpaca now, and I'm the only one ooh, ooh. left. No, it's just suffering <laughs> eating. Put yeah. it in there. It's literally just like oh. lamb. Yeah. It's okay. It's like when you eat a deer or a dear friend. A <laughs> dear friend. <laughs> you are red. I don't know if the, if the t shirt, but it's just. I'm a little bit sunburned. Yeah, we were hiking at really high altitude this morning. It was sunny. Yes. And you are really, really red. Even Jesus Christ can sunburn. <laughs> Justino is very sunburnt. Justino from Milan and uh, Jesus Christ here, J J C. They are really sunburnt. Yeah. Uh, Ellie and I. I got a little bit, but you look totally fine. Superpowers of the northern Italian folk. <laughs> we have one more archaeological site to visit, and then choof choof. Train. Let's go. <laughs> Tara keeps saying that I have the same face. It's the baby alpaca. <laughs> We used to store all the food up there because it's super windy, super dry. But storage, food storage. We're ready to climb. It took the conquistadores one year and a half from the Peru border, from where we crossed the border, yeah. to get to here. No, to get to Cusco, from actually. From Mahen to Cusco. So, wow. we were fast. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but now we need to climb up to the top. Up to the top. This was different. This is different. Between Pizak, because when we saw the retaining walls in Pizak, they were cultivating, using that land to just harvesting and cultivating everything. Here is just retaining wall, and we are in the religious area here. They cultivate the valley. They brought the food up there, up there to store it. with the llamas. With the llamas, and this was just the religious area. Next time we're gonna harvest Lucas. <laughs> Lucas fur and make a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> My gosh, Mia. Alpaca beard. Baby alpaca red beard. <laughs> oh. That's a natural beard. <laughs> yes. Natural cashmere. Oh, beautiful people, I don't know if you nice. can see over there. Right here, there is a face with a beard. That is. Parece Luca. And uh, 
yes, uh, this was a god, uh, Tunupa. But, uh, and uh, as you can see here also, it's like uh, if it's Tunupa is holding the universe. Uh, the most important Inca god. We are almost there, almost there. They brought all these rocks uh, up here, and they were little guys, uh, but they were, they were really smart. If you have this line, if it's perfect, no, they were able to fit and to make those angles. The plan B will be to make here flat, smooth. And now the idea was to carve from each corner little by little. But they wow. didn't finish this part. So that's why you can see those pieces of rock sticking out. That's the, how much they were able to carve. No? But also those uh, sticks, like you can see, that's the how they can get support and they can push up this piece of rock to feed with this piece of rock. No? It, that was not just like a one or two years. All of this job was made it between two or three generations and that's at least between 80 years or 90 years. We had dinner, we have our pizza to go, and now we are ready to go on the train. I'm so excited to get on the train. Yes, yes, yes. We have the pizza to eat on the train. <laughs> <laughs> oh. While walking to the station, to the train station, we will go to Aguas Caliente where we will sleep tonight. We will get uh, this uh, Peru Rail Expedition train. Uh, it's a special train for special people. Fun fact is, local people cannot have a reservation on the train. They need to stand for two hours. And for tourists, actually, you can have your seat. It's like booking a plane. You yes. have your seat uh, in your... And you have uh, a really good seat. You can... It's like we don't know yet. Let's go and check it out. Yes, but this is what they say. <laughs> this is what they say. Let's, Let's check see. it out. Check it out. It's always better to see with your own eyes. This is the train. Look how nice! Wow. <laughs> oh, guys, you are here as well! Wow. They're all together! <laughs> wow! This is the beginning of the two hours uh, adventure. Tomorrow morning. Machu Picchu. Baby. 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 <laughs> so Ali and I were thinking to edit, but as you can see, the train is really shaking. How are you feeling, Trent? <laughs> Trent doesn't care at all. Trent's like, like whatever. That. As long as I have an internet connection, I'm totally fine. Airplane. You get inside, it's like quiet and beautiful, and then the train starts moving, and it's like. <laughs> Are we going to survive this? Let me eat some pizza. Just because if we die, at least I die after eating pizza. We are in Aguas Calientes, guys. We made it. We survived this crazy train, a roller coaster train. Buenas noches, guys. See you tomorrow morning. Ciao, ciao. Four in the morning, we have to be at the bus station. So, 3.30. 3.45 downstairs. Okay. Okay? Sounds yep. good. Sounds good. Best okay. noches. Good night. See you in ciao, a few ciao. hours. <laughs> yes. Ta da. Wow, you look nice. Wow. Okay, guys, we will take a shower, go to bed, uh, because tomorrow morning. We should wake up at 3 a.m. in the morning because we should be ready at 4 a.m. to be the first in line for the bus to Machu Picchu. It's been great. Today was amazing. Two archaeological sites. One market. One uh, market. Lunch, dinner. Perfect. A lot of information from Jose. Thank you. Thank you again to Alpaca Expeditions for this amazing two days tour. Guys, we we'll catch you tomorrow morning. We love you guys, we appreciate you. See you tomorrow morning. You tomorrow. Ciao guys. Ciao.